So today, we're kind of doing a bridge to take us from our series on sharing to next Sunday, where we start a, sh a series on the five love lang languages, affirmation, service gifts, times, and touch. Do you know what your love language is? If you don't, there's a stack of tests back there. It's a really easy test to take. Pastor Ron, you may need to take your shoes off to count that high, but you'll do okay, all right? Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Take a test home and see what your love language gift is, and then join us next week. And we also have handouts. Grab one of these so you know what's happening. You know what's happening this summer. And we'll actually grab a couple of these and say, if you've got some friends, say, hey, come listen to our series on the love language. Be a great way of inviting them to church. Today, though, it is Holy Trinity, but we want to look at the verse that you heard in our gospel lesson. It's the Great Commission. Now, we've used this verse many times before because we also use it for our vision statement, which is what? Disciples making disciples. So, the verse we want to look at is this one. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So, to help us understand this, we're going to take a look at all 28 chapters of St. Matthew. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if you're awake or not out there. <laughs> no, we're not doing all 28 chapters of St. Matthew. We're just doing the 28th chapter, verses 19 and 20. But first, a little bit about Matthew. We all know him as one of the 12. His name means gift of the Lord. And he was, you ready to boo? A tax collector. Yeah, boo. <laughs> Sorry if you work for the IRS. <laughs> Sometimes the other name they called him by Levi. We have two different theories. Some say it was written before the early 50s, and some say in the 70s. And that's when Mark was written, because they have a whole lot in common. We usually try to keep it about in the 50s. Recipients were sent to the Greeks. Uh, readers had to be Greek-speaking, probably to a Jewish group that Matthew was heavy on the fulfillment of. And we know it was to the Greek because he was on heavy on the fulfillment of the Messiah and he used a whole lot of uh, Old Testament scripture to show that prophecy. So his main purpose was just that, to show Jesus as the Messiah, the promised one coming from David's lineage, and you know what his mission statement was? Disciples making disciples. And here he is sharing so that others can connect, grow, live, and share. Wow. And we thought we were the first to come up with that one. My focus today now is on the part of the charge that Christ gave to his disciples to us. You know, we're really good about the first half of this verse. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. I shouldn't say we're really good at the very beginning. Go there, making disciples of all nations. We do try. And, I, and I'm proud of this, this congregation. We have Bernie here. Um, Reverend Dr. Dinku, one of our members, has been over in Sudan for a month and a half at least. Um, doing awesome work over there. If you're, not, if you're on Facebook, uh, make sure you're a friend of his and, and follow his mission journeys. It's been quite interesting. So we are getting out to the worlds and trying to get out to the world around us. We're really good at the word and sacraments, so the baptizing, we're very good at, but do we really get the last part of it then? The whole teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and 
Behold, I am with you to the very end of the age. Well, remember now how we got the Great Commission to go, go and do. Matthew walks us through the life and times of Jesus. He wants the people to see the promised Messiah. He wants people to know not just the love and the forgiveness, but he wants you to know the power behind the gospel. Because he has seen amazing things because of it. That gospel being that Jesus was given to us by a very loving Father so that we could live our lives to the fullest here and then in the hereafter. So the two things I want us all to see today, and it's more than to just baptize, he says we are to teach. And then remember his promise. Teach. Didactic. I have always loved that. Didactic device. The teaching device. How do you teach the gospel? What does that look like? Well, the class syllabus for this is very simple. Because he says to teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. That really sounds weird coming from Jesus, doesn't it? I command you to do this. <laughs> he usually shows us with his life, and, and he's more, you know, he comes at it at a kind of a, he comes at it a way that you think it was your idea, and you're all going to on it. But this time he says, that I commanded you. Well, think about that. Where have we been commanded by God's word? I'll give you a hint. There's ten of them. Now, we're not going to go through all ten commandments. But before we get into what we should teach, please remember this. You teach others in so many different ways. You can lecture, but I find if you're trying to lecture somebody on your belief or your faith, that doesn't go over really, really well. Unless you're teaching a class. Then it's an awesome place to do a lecture. You can tell others. You can teach them by your life experience. Tell others how God has gotten you through something maybe they're going through. Tell others how awesome God is. Tell them how much he loves them. And then there are many different ways that people learn. Some people learn by hearing. Some people by reading. And some people actually have to kind of do a hands-on. I don't know which style is best for you, but I know for myself, you know, like if, if I would say, what is three plus five? Most people would go, hey, my brain didn't work that way. <laughs> I'd have to get out eight pennies, put five there, three here, put them together and add them up. I had to, I had to work it. I had to do it. I had to play around with it. That's the way I learned. But now I truly believe no matter how you learn, we teach others, like our children, not by what we say, but by what we do. Trust me, and I've said this before, your neighbors are watching you. Have you ever told them where you're going on a Sunday morning and what an awesome church you have? The associate pastor is wonderful, the senior pastor sucks, but hey, you know, you don't have to tell them that part. Just tell them how wonderful the community is here at Emmanuel, because they're watching you. They're watching what you do. And speaking of sponges who are watching you, what you're doing, children, whoa. Children, they, they watch you like a hawk. My two-year-old grandson right now is a sponge. You don't dare say anything. Any word that you do not want him to repeat, do not say to him at this point in his life because he will go to preschool and repeat it. All right? That's just the way kids are. And a thing to dads. Dads, if you're here, thank you. 
If you're not, if the wives are here, or maybe the wives are watching online, tell dads to listen to this because they're teaching their children, especially their sons, mom and y'all go to church, I'm staying home. So when they get older, they're going to go, I'm going to be like dad. Dad taught them by his actions. It's crazy how we teach people. So, trust me. Teach by word and actions. Everybody learns it different ways, so be aware of that. Now, what did he command us? Remember the two tables of the law? Here's your catechetical test for the morning. There are two tables of the law of the Ten Commandments. We break it down into the first table of the law being commandments one through three. Remember how it's summarized up? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. How do we teach that? I'll tell you what the first thing I would say is, what does your pocketbook teach you? Do we, does, does anybody carry a pocketbook anymore? <laughs> I was going to tell you what a checkbook teaches you, but it doesn't anybody carry a checkbook anymore. How about you when you go online and you look up your bank account, does that, what does that teach you? Does it show you who you really worship? Do you love the Lord your God with all your mind, body, and soul, and heart? Or do you maybe love caribou more than Christ? I mean, think about this. If you're buying a $5 thing of coffee, I'm probably going to get shot at for calling it coffee because I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> And you add that up over the month, and if you're giving more to caribou than to Christ, think about that. In other words, do you give your first fruits to Jesus, or does he get the leftovers? And again, remember, loving the Lord your God with all your heart and mind, body, and soul also means your actions, what you're doing on Sunday mornings. And I could keep going on about this, but I don't think we want to be here all day. I think you get the idea. I mean, God needs to come first in all of our lives. That's the first commandment, the commandment God, Jesus, gives to us. Second command, then. Second table of the law, commandments four through. This is a trick question. Four through. It's not a trick question. It's through ten. Remember how we summarize that up? Right up there. Love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. That's been our theme through the year. Have you done that? Have your actions showed that? Have you helped a neighbor lately? And remember the definition of a neighbor. It isn't just that guy that lives next door to you. Your neighbor really is everybody and anybody. So next time, let's say when a young waitress screws up your order, be patient with her. Remember we were all there at one time or another. When you see somebody that maybe can, you know you could help, help them out. You'd be surprised when you treat others with kindness. I love watching their reactions once in a while. Because right now, this world doesn't treat other people with kindness. We want revenge. We want, I don't know what we want anymore. Treat them with kindness. Treat them the way you would want to be treated. And when they look at you and go, are you crazy? <laughs> you can say, no. I just have an awesome God who has loved me and treated me this way, and I want to treat you that way. What a great way of sharing Jesus with others. Now, I have to admit, that's, a lot of this is heavy when, I, when you start into the commandments. It's like Heather and her thing. We're all sinful. Nobody keeps these things perfectly. And Jesus understood that. And that's why on that day when he commissioned his disciples, he promised one thing. Did you catch it? Baptize, teach, go out into the world, and... 
I am with you always to the very end of the age. Man, Jesus knew there wouldn't be easy out in this world. You know, we were sent at our baptism. We were sent when we're done with the Eucharist. We were sent every day to go out into this world. And we have to remember the key word here is always. Jesus is always with us, not just Sunday mornings, but every day, 24 7. And in knowing that, we can have the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding right now in this crazy world. A peace that can only come from a loving and forgiving God. So, my challenge for you this morning in these really crazy days, remember what we are to teach others through word and deed. Love your God. Love your neighbor as yourself. And never doubt this. As we go out into this world, Jesus is with us. Sometimes he might be walking beside us. Sometimes I swear he's walking behind me and kicking me in the butt to keep me going. Boy, I know this. There was times he's been carrying me. He is with us always. So go and make disciples. And all the disciples of God said, Amen. Amen.